Our subject, holy for God. Our theme is holy for Christ. And God speak all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good. And all the time. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to the house of God to listen to his word. It is my honor. It is my privilege. It is my delightful joy to stand before you to speak for God. I can think of no higher privilege other than to reflect God in life than to speak for God. It's a very solemn responsibility and my intention as best as my humanity will permit me is to give you thus said the Lord. Amen. Prophets and Kings page 626 paragraph 1 Ella White writes the words of the Bible and the Bible alone should be heard from the pulpit. Amen. This is my intention, my desire and by the grace of God I will give you thus said the Lord and of course that inspired commentary from the pen of Ellen White, the servant to this church. It is 21 minutes to 12. I am unfamiliar with when you get out, but I'll try to release you as soon as I possibly can without rushing the Spirit of God. Is there anyone with us today? You are not a servant. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Are you together? May the Lord bless your lives and guide you right into his kingdom when he comes. Amen. Please keep coming to worship with us until that happy day when I look at you again and I'll be looking at two members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Say it again. Amen. Anybody else? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? Ah, I see a hand moving in the, pul in the balcony. God bless you. Thanks for waving your hand. I have picked you out. May the Lord bless your life. 
May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart with such abundance that his goodness to you will move you to serve him with all your heart and soul. Thank you very much. And worship with us again. Any one of us, you are not okay. Thank you, my lovely sister. Let me take a chance. What's your name? Say it loudly. Zihu. Okay. All right. All right. Well, God knows exactly what it is. Thank you very much for coming. And may the Lord place a hand of mercy on your life. And never remove it. Say amen for our sister. Anyone else? You're not a seventh. Is that it? Well, move the hand so I can identify. Oh, there you are. What's your name? What's your name? Ashi. 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 Ashi, God bless your life. God bless your family. And God bless you so torrentially that you will be a blessing to others. Say amen for Ashi. Anyone else? And I'm not joking. These are prayers I'm praying for our guests. This is no joke. Anybody else? Okay. Did I miss someone? Where? Oh, hi. I see those two hands. Thanks for coming. Is this the first time you're visiting with us? In the balcony? Say something. What did the person say? Yes. We don't want it to be the last. If you have a need, may the Lord supply it. If you have a sickness, may the Lord remove it. And if you have an enemy, enemy. Thanks for coming. And God bless you in every possible way. Say amen. amen. Did you raise your hand, sister? Oh, you were saying amen. Okay. It's uh, 19 minutes to 12 and temperance in all things, including sermons. Before I go any further, let me ask you to do three favors for me. Favor number one, if you have a Bible and a phone, I prefer that you use this over that. This is the Holy Bible. This is not the Holy iPhone. Are you with me? No, it's, I'm quite serious. This does not ring. This has no temptation to check WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Viber, email, Facebook, whatever else occupies our time. This comes loaded with temptations. I was in a hotel room a few years ago preparing to go speak downstairs and I was reading the Bible on this thing. And these smartphones they have while you're reading or doing whatever you're doing, an app or something popped up at the bottom, an advertisement. And it said, Psst, hey, are you lonely? <laughs> no, that's what it said. It was an advertisement for dating Asian women. I was in the room by myself. All I needed to do was take the tip of one finger and touch it and all the information would have come to the preacher, reading the Word of God. What I'm saying to you is this This does not need to be It has all the power of the universe. So if you can use one of these, do that. If all you are saddled with is this, then please don't let it ring in the presence of a holy God and under no circumstances walk out of a church to answer the phone unless you're the physician to the president of the country and he needs your services. Other than that, respect the God of heaven and earth. If that's reasonable, say amen. The second favor I ask very politely for me while I'm speaking. All I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I only want to speak God's words. 
I will surely be tempted to speak mine, but my, has no, my words have no saving value. But the words of God, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. So ask God to put his words in my mouth. And favor number three, I want you to think as you listen. Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Think as you listen. And don't chat. Don't do anything to offend the Spirit of God. And that also may disturb me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for allowing me to live to see this day. Hearing to listen to your people sing. I thank you for vision to see them. And to see the sunlight. And the grass I saw this morning. And the guinea fowl I saw running across the meadow. I thank you today God for sanity. Thank you for knowledge of Jesus Christ. One verse says, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Dear God, thank you for not giving me the full punishment I deserve. Ah, God, if I've offended you, forgive me. You know I'm weak. I am dirt. I am clay. I ask you now, Lord, through the agency of your spirit, take full possession of my mind, my mouth, my heart, so that I am simply an instrument in your hand. And let the tune you play is the tune of truth. Father, bless all those who've come. And may God, I ask you to pour out a special blessing on the visitors. Touch, let this day long remain in their minds. Now God, bless not only us, but wherever your people are worshiping you on this holy day, your Bible Sabbath, bless them God. Bless this country and every country represented by this congregation. Let the leaders always remember in all the deliberations, righteousness exalteth the nation. And by the way, Father, remind us, exalteth an individual. I commit this message to your glory, dear God. Suppress self, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject, holy for God. Our theme, is holy for Christ. The message today, holy for God. Mark 12, reading from verse 28. Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 28. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. If you have my version at all times, feel free to read with me. Mark 12, Reading from verse 28. <clears throat> Try to find these passages quickly so I can move quickly and release you quickly. Do you have it now? And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God, say it with me now, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And we stop right there. Well, let's continue. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, or one Lord, and there is none other than he. 
and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices and when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of God and no man after that durst ask him any question the scribe perhaps a lawyer asked Jesus of all the commandments which is the preeminent one you see God is a God of degrees and I don't mean academic degrees Jesus tells us he that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me what is the conclusion we must love God more than we love anyone else we must have degrees of love you must love God more than you love your husband your wife your children your job your bank account your friends your shoes we must love God above everything and everyone else thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind and strength and so the scribe wanted to know what is the first the chief the preeminent commandment that stands above all others Ellen White in vision was taken to heaven and she saw the ark Jesus opened it and she saw the Ten Commandments each of them had a light but the fourth had a halo around it which none of the others had what's the conclusion of the Ten Commandments the first and the chief is commandment four <coughs> Jesus had 12 named disciples that traveled with him he had many more than the 12 but the 12 that traveled with him of those 12 he was closer to three of them than he was to nine. Are you with me? God is a God of degrees. He was closer to Peter, James, and John than he was to the other nine. Jesus frequented the homes of people. He had dinner in the house of Simon the leper. There was a feast in the house of Matthew. There was, he spent time in Capernaum in the house of Peter where he healed the mother-in-law of Peter. He spent time in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Of all the homes that Jesus visited, his favorite was the home of Lazarus. He preferred to be there more than in any other home. And so we read in Desire of Ages, page 524, paragraph 1, Bless all who sought his help. He loves the whole human family, but to some he is bound by peculiarly tender associations. His heart was knit by a strong bond of affection to the family at Bethany. And for one of them, his most wonderful work was wrought. She is saying, Jesus deliberately reserved his most mighty miracle for the family closest to him. When God, through Moses, brought the Israelites out of Egypt, here's what God told Moses to tell the Israelites. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. God is closer to some than he is to others. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, I will observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all nations of the earth I'm simply trying to stress 
that God is a God of degrees. This functions in heaven as well. The highest angel, Gabriel, has more power than any other angel. Are you with me? Now we apply the principle of degrees to God's law. Love for God must take preeminence over love for our fellow man. Even though love for God is expressed through our love for our fellow man, but love for God must be preeminent. Now, Jesus told the scribe, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy, with all thy strength. Now, this is the first of the two tables. On that table, there were four commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't worship or make idols. Don't take God's name in vain. And remember the Sabbath. Of the four, the one that identifies who God is, what his office in the universe is, and the territory of his sovereignty, the commandment that does that is commandment. This is the commandment that, is, that identifies God as creator. Now God's creatorship, if there's such a word, is the foundation of his ownership. Let me pause and pray again. Dear God, please clarify my language. Help me to make it so simple the children will understand and suppress self. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to this quotation. Education, page 137, paragraph 4. What did I say? Education, page 137, paragraph 4. What did I say? That which lies at the foundation of business integrity and true success is the recognition of God's ownership. If you're running a business, you have a business, you ought to understand first and foremost, everything you have belongs to God. And so Ellen White counsels us, that which lies at the foundation of business integrity and true success is the recognition of God's ownership. The creator of all things, he is the original proprietor. Because he created, everything created belongs to God. Colossians 1 verse 16, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now when someone reads a passage of this kind, the tendency is to read it casually and just move on, and not pause to grasp the seriousness and the literalness of the passage. It is not found in Revelation, which is wholly symbolic. Christ made everything, visible, invisible, in heaven, and in earth. Which means your mind belongs to God, legally. And I've thrown in the word legally. Your senses belong to God legally. Your health belongs to God by right. Everything we have rightfully belongs to God except our sins. Those rightfully belong to us. <laughs> Are you with me? Now, the ideal human being is an example for us. And who's that? Jesus Christ. As we continue with holy for God, 
And let's look at how Jesus conducted his life in harmony with this concept of holy for God. Go to John 7, quickly. You read 14 to 16. John 7, 14 to 16. It is precisely 12 o'clock. And I refer to the time from time to time just to let you know I am sensitive to time and to the fact you may have other things to do. Do you have John 7? Amen. What verses did I say? 14 to 16. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? But Jesus answered them, Read with me now, My doctrine is not mine, come on, but his that sent me. What I teach, says Christ, is not mine. So when Jesus taught the Sabbath, he was teaching what somebody taught him. And who was that someone? The Father. Let me say it again. You heard the words. You missed the import of the words. Any doctrine Jesus Christ taught, he taught something that he received from another source. Let me add something else. In his humanity. He got that doctrine from someone else. Let's strengthen this point by going to chapter 8. We'll read from verse 26. Our subject, holy for God. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is what? True. And I speak to the world what? those things which I have heard of him. This is confirmation of what we read in verse 16, John 7. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. That is not symbolic. When Jesus raised Lazarus, it was the Father who told him to raise him. When Jesus told Peter, come, walk on the water to me, it was the Father who told him, tell him, come. Now this is strange to your mind and to mine, because we don't allow anyone to tell us anything. Mine resists instruction, unless it is instruction for sin. Don't tell me anything. Don't advise me. I am 16. Don't tell me what to look for in a boyfriend. I know everything. I get counsel from my other 16-year-old friends. <laughs> then said he unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But the Father which sent me, he taught me, what I should say, what I should speak. It is the Father that told Jesus what to speak. The Father taught him. Let's go to St. John 8. Let's go to verse 37. Our subject, holy for God. Our theme, holy for Christ. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Let me pause and digress, hopefully meaningfully. When God's word does not have a permanent place in your life, and you live long, Jesus tells us in John 16, they're doing all these things to me because they don't know you. Let me say it again. Church membership is no guarantee of a Christian life. Church members said, crucify him. I know that you're Abraham's seed, said Christ. But ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. It has a place on your shelf. It has a place in your pocketbook. It has no place in your heart. When the restraining word of God 
is not in the life. Let me say it again, that person under the right provocation. I continue. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Now listen carefully. I speak that which I have what? Seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Jesus says, all that I do, I am patterning, or I am following my father's instructions. It is obvious then, if you look at John 7, 14 to 16, John 8, 26 to 28, and 37, uh, and other verses which we can invoke, Jesus lived entirely, come on, for the Father. His life's theme was holy. In John 6, verse 38, six minutes after 12. Do you have John 6? Verse 38. <clears throat> Let me pray again. Holy Father, please God, tighten your grip on my mind, my mouth. Whatever I require to express this message, you control it. For your glory and our blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven, what? Not to do my own will. But the will of him, that sent me. This is that every other so-called child of God should follow. I have to keep saying that these words are not symbolic because I don't think you've, that has registered in your minds yet. Let me say differently by giving you this one of the most beautiful quotations you can read in any book, whether written by Ellen White or Socrates or whomever. The Desire of Ages, page 20, paragraph 2. There is nothing save the selfish heart of man that lives unto itself. No bird that cleaves the air, no animal that moves upon the ground, but ministers to some other life. There is no leaf of the forest or lowly blade of grass but has its ministry. Every tree and shrub and leaf pours forth that element of life without which neither man nor animal could live. And man and animal in turn minister to the life of tree and shrub and leaf. The flowers breathe fragrance and unfold their beauty and blessing to the world. The sun sheds its light to gladden a thousand worlds. The ocean, itself the source of all our springs and fountains, receives the streams from every land, but takes to give. The mists ascending from its bosom fall in showers to water the earth, that it may bring forth and bud. What is the condensed meaning of that quotation? Everything created was created to serve something else. Now when you read where she says, every blade of grass has its ministry. When you leave, you'll see grass. Pause and look at one blade of grass. And let your mind be challenged. of God wrote. These concepts are foreign to us because our minds are tainted. But that taint is to be gradually removed by consistent exposure to the divine radiation of God's word. Take this now and apply it to human beings. You and I were not created for our sakes. We were created for the glory of God. In other words, you have nothing to do with you. One person understood what I just said. Let me say it again. You have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with me. I am on this earth. Someone read my mind and finish my thought. For God, at the risk of being tedious, this is not symbolic. 
We must live lives holy for God. As G or for Christ, as Jesus lived his life holy for God. Understand this, the interaction between Christ and God is the model for the interaction between us and Christ. You missed it. My fault. Let me say differently. The way Christ interacted with the Father is precisely the way we must interact with Christ. In the light of this message, as verily as Christ lived his life holy for God, finish my thoughts. We must live our lives holy for Christ, which is our theme. Genesis 1.26. Don't go there. Say. And God said, let us make man in our image. Before sin, there was one image. When Adam sinned, a second one popped up. If Adam hadn't sinned, all his children would have been born in God's image. Because Adam had no image of his own. A friend of mine asked me many years ago, he said, Randy, when do I express myself? And I responded with one word, hopefully I was clear, never. <laughs> this is one of the problems in the church when it comes to fashion. I want to express myself. That's why I wear what I wear. Or fix my hair the way I fix it. Or buy the shoes I buy. I want to say to the world, sartorially, this is me. Which is also an expensive way to rebel. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. It's a form of rebellion. Because sin is rebellion. You are not in this earth to express yourself. You and I are on this earth, finish my words, to express God. This is not my conclusion, this is the Bible. 1 Corinthians 10.31, say it with me. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do. Now you tell me what is excluded from whatsoever. Nothing. Finish the verse now. Do all. Do how much? How much? Finish it now. To the glory of God. Listen to me. This is not symbolic. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Go there with me. First. Let's see how it supports 1 Corinthians 10 31. Towards the back of the Bible, you should bump into 1 Peter. Do you have it now? 14 after 12. Find it, find it, please. That's the problem with screens, you see. We no longer know how to find the books of the Bible. And phones, you see this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. She finally found it. First Peter 115, what does it say? But as he which hath called you, come on, is holy, finish the verse. So be holy carefully now, read microscopically, finish the verse. In all manner of conversation. What's our theme? What's our subject? Listen to first Peter 115 again. But as he which hath called you is holy. When is God not holy? On Tuesdays? Is God only holy on Sabbath? The Bible says, as he which hath called you is holy. 
so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's read verse 8. 1 Timothy 4, listen to the Apostle Paul writing to a young man, and of course a young lady will benefit just as much, because truth applies to everyone. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading verse 8. We have it now. For bodily exercise, come on, profiteth little. But godliness, come on, is profitable, come on, unto all things. When you buy clothes, be driven by godliness. When you, at the right age, set your eyes on a young lady, be driven by godliness. Not her hips and lips. When you consider an academic degree that will cost your parents so much money, be driven, finish my words, by God. When you go to wherever restaurant you go, and you have the menu, and you see a whole list of dead animals. Finish my words. Be driven by God. Whether therefore ye eat or drink. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Now finish the verse microscopically. Having promise, come on, of the life that now is, and of the life to come. Godliness extends beyond this life. When this is the way you live your life, then you and I will match our theme, holy for Christ. As Christ was holy for God. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do. We do not believe that kind of approach. and narrow and opposed to our freedom because our natural condition is to see the benefits of sin and to view the horrors of holiness and so when the devil spoke to Eve he said he shall not surely die for God tried and said in the day ye eat thereof give me one word for that Disobedience. Give me a smaller version of disobedience. Sin. In the day ye sin, but he does not use that word. In the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Benefit one. It had no foundation in truth. And ye shall be as gods. Benefit two. No foundation in truth. Knowing good and evil. The devil presented sin as attractive. He never used the word sin. Or disobedience. And he did his work of marketing so well that Eve bought the product. You see a good thing at the store, we go tell our friends. So she went to her husband and he went along. My brothers and sisters, if they had followed the principle of for God, holy for God, they would never have eaten of that fruit. Many of you are in college. How many of you are in college? Nice your hands or university, some form of all right. Let me guess. What do you guess? Yes? Medicine. Medicine. I'm tempted to ask you to tell me what are the twelve cranial nerves, but I will not do that. Why <laughs> are you studying medicine? Tell me loudly. You want to help people, and you said it because you guessed that's what I wanted to hear. Right. Anyone else who raised the hand? I'm, 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 
quite serious. Anyone else raise their hand? Oh yes, what do you study? I'm doing physics. Physics. Now, under the force of honesty, <laughs> and in the presence of a holy God, surrounded by witnesses, why did you choose physics? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, initially I was doing geology. You were doing geology. So the reason why I moved to physics was to um, learn more about the interactions mm -hmm. and the techniques with geology. Okay, so, but it had nothing to do with God. <laughs> no, but you're a Christian. <laughs> so that's a problem. Here's a Christian who does things had no connections with God. You see, when some... <laughs> The choice of a degree must be driven by godliness. In other words, how will this advance the glory of God? Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. This is why we're not blessed. Do not belong to God. So he doesn't bless them. They're not mine. Your education is not mine. Even though you pursue it with the brain I give you. God bless it. Now, God is so good. There are general blessings that God bestows. Matthew 5.45, He maketh His Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Those are general blessings. But the specific choices, blessings, the ones that cause the angels to marvel. They are reserved for those who live holy for Christ. Let me tell you something. God blesses what's His. When your life is not His, yes, God will sprinkle some blessings on you just to preserve you so you come to the place where you accept Him then he can send a tsunami. There are Christians blaming God. God is not nice to me. He has given me nothing. Your life does not belong to God. He has no legal basis to pour out the fullness of his blessing. Testimony, volume 5, page 341, paragraph 1. Fallen man is Satan's lawful captive. There is a degree of legality, not legalism, legality, because we have a law. <coughs> Fallen man is Satan's lawful captive. The sinner rightfully and legally belongs to Satan. I didn't say the person who occasionally makes a mistake, no. I said the sinner whose lifestyle, that's the lifestyle. That person lawfully belongs to the devil. And God does not pour out blessings in heaven. But he wants to bless your lives. So he tells you, come to me. Leave where you are and come. Well, let me change my words. Call me and I will break you out from where you are. Because you can't leave. Are you following? I mean, holy for Christ. So that when you see Jesus said to Philip, John 14, and I'm coming to the close. Philip said in John 14 verse 8, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Before I go any further, let me pray again. God in heaven, let me not drift into self-expression. God, I offer myself as your servant, your slave. You tell me what to say, I'll say it. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me, you finish it. Have seen the Father. Now, this is Jesus and the Father. That's holy for the Father. You and I must come to the place where it can be said, he that has seen them, finish my words, have seen Jesus. This is not symbolic.
that you look at Christ, you look at the believer, you're not sure who's who. Because they are alike. The humanity of Christ is our example. And Christ, listen to how Christ lives such a powerful life. Desire of Ages, page 664, paragraph 4. What did I say? How many of you wrote it down? Ah, God bless you, sister. God bless you. Christ revealed no qualities and exercised no powers that men may not have through faith in him. His perfect humanity is that which all his followers may possess. <coughs> what is she saying? We can live the life that Jesus Christ lived. Not in our strength, because Christ did not live it in his strength. Listen to how the quotation ends. His perfect humanity is that which all his followers may possess if they will be in subjection to us. You know why Christ has not yet come? It is not because we need more Adventist colleges to become universities. That's not why he hasn't come. It is not because we need to build more hospitals. That's not why he hasn't come. Or people need to have more children. Mm -mm. We are not yet living holy for Christ. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his people. When the character of Christ shall be in his church, his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. So the delay of Christ is because the church is not holy for Christ. And then we blame the papacy. You know God is not waiting for the papacy to do anything. He's waiting for us. We blame the Illuminati. We blame the Muslims, they're hard to win. We blame the Hindus, they're hard to win. We blame the Buddhists, they're hard to win. The hardest people God had to deal with were the Israelites. He couldn't win them. Are you listening to me? My brothers and sisters, children of God, make a decision because if your life is not you see the only way God can save you uh, let me say it differently holy for God holy for Christ if you surrender to Christ 99% you're lost you see the devil only needs 1% to destroy your life all of me in order to save me. So his desire for holy for God and holy for Christ is not based on self-centeredness. It is based on our... The only way God can save you is if you're holy his. I'll express it differently. Matthew 10, 37, He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Christ is saying, I must be first. You see, God can only save us if he occupies position. He cannot save you from position two. You're not listening. I have to say it again. It is only when God is first in my life, it is only from that vantage position that he can save me. Any other position and the advantage goes to the enemy. And so this thing, holy or holy for Christ, is very, very serious. And when I deal with end time events this afternoon, I will come at it in a very, very different way. I have nothing to say about the paper. The little time of Jacob's trouble, 
the big time of Jacob's trouble, the Sunday law, the close of probation, the falling of the seven last plague, I have nothing to do with that. But I will discuss end times. I have a question for you, don't answer me. Have you given your life entirely to Christ? The answer is no. Do it before you leave. Do it before you get up out of your chair. Because death does not send a text. Neither God nor the devil sends a text to tell you this is your last moment on earth. Are you with me? Do not leave this building without giving your life entirely to Christ, to God. Having heard what you've heard, do not leave this building with the arrogance that I will still continue to live the way I live because I'll be alive five years from now and just before the close of probation, I will give my life to Christ. Do it before you leave. Because the most blessed life is a life that is placed in the hands of God. Because those in his hands cannot be plucked out. Yes. Five when Jesus came face to face with the demoniac of the Gadarenes. And the description of the man is such that neither could any man tame him or bind him. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always day and night he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone. People saw him and ran. No one could restrain him. That's the devil. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with loud voice and said, Gee, what have I to thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, listen to verse 10. This is the demon now. And he besought him much, that he would not send them away out of the country. The demons begged Jesus. <laughs> Don't send us away. Verse 11. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him to beseech his to beg. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. What I'm trying to tell you that 2,000 demons up against one man. Name that one man, Jesus Christ, and they all begged him. When your life is in the hands of God, Satan has to beg God. Can you say? And so Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to sit, have you, that he may seek to his weak, but I have prayed for thee. The devil went to Jesus for permission, but if Simon Peter had not been a child of God, Satan needs no permission to harass his own people. Am I talking to myself? Let me close the book as a visual symbol I'm about to end. When your life belongs to God, the devil needs permission. When your life for God's sweetest blessings. When your life belongs to God, the devil will complain to God as he complained about Job. Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Some people, the businesses keep failing because they don't belong to God. And so they try and it fails. They try and it fails. They try and it fails. Why? Because the glory of God was not the motivation behind that business. And some go to school, no tuition, no tuition. Why? Because the choice of a degree had nothing to do with the glory of God. The universe are under the control of Christ for your blessing. That's not my view. That's the Bible. 
power to us when who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominions and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Let me say it again. All the treasures of heaven are in the command of Christ for the blessing of the church. But we must live our lives, three words tell me, holy for Christ. Give Christ your education. Give him your bank account. Give him your romantic life. Give him your family life. Give him your recreational life. Give him your house. I'm not joking. Give him your car. Let me tell you what happened to me that I'll close. Many, many years ago, I had a little Honda CRX. They don't make them anymore. A little car, very cute, loved it. And I used to drive very fast. Lord cured me of that, painlessly. And uh, one day I was in the parking lot about to go somewhere and I said, Father, this car is yours. You gave me the money to buy it. I'll drive it, I'm your chauffeur. I'll put in the gas, change the oil, the tire, but it is yours. And I acknowledge this car as yours. What I'm about to tell you is fact. Two weeks later, I checked the mileage, just out of you, not connected to what I said to God, you know, just checking how my car is performing. I was getting 10 more miles per gallon than I was before because I checked it. I used to get 36 miles per gallon. When I dedicated the car to God, and it had nothing to do with mileage, my mileage went to 46 miles per hour. Many of us are sick because our bodies do not belong to God. Mind, Character and Personality, Volume 1, page 34, paragraph 3. I won't ask you what I said. Hello, I writes, Let the mind become intelligent, and the will be placed on the Lord's side, and there will be a wonderful improvement in the physical health. Without doing anything else, a surrender of the life to God, wholly, completely, and without reservation, creates immediately an improvement in the health. You're not visiting the pharmacist or the chemist, whatever you call them. I know I'm repetitious, but I'm compelled to be. Give your life to God without reservation. You ask, how do I do that? You just do it. You say, Lord, here is my life. Let me say it again. If your life does not belong to God, it is not God's fault that He cannot bless the way He wants to. Give your life to God. And for those who do not know how to say, Lord, I give you my life, then say to God, Father, I don't know how to give it. I ask you. But take it and be the God of my life. How many of you will say, Father, and say it seriously, God doesn't joke, there are no jokes in the Bible. Father, to the best of my ability, I give you my life, my education, my health, my dress choices, my eating choices, my romantic choices, I commit all of that to you, to the best of my ability. If you say that, may I say right hand. Don't look around, just keep looking straight at me. Stand up. Quietly, quietly. Head bowed, eyes closed. Father, if I preach badly, forgive me. If I was a little too hard on your children, forgive me. Do not take it lightly when they treat it harshly. My intention, dear Father, was to impress upon them the importance of living holy for Christ or for God. 
that we will live holy for Jesus as he lived holy for you. No variation, they got precisely the same way. Where I fell short, let the Spirit make up the difference, Father. Now God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who came in our fallen nature and demonstrated how to live only for God, in his name, by the power of his life, accept those who make commitments right in your presence. To give the life completely to you, Father, help them to understand this commitment must be renewed every day. I pray, Father, even now as they stand, that you will grant them a measure of your spirit that will sustain them in this decision which the devil does not like, but all of heaven is rejoicing. Please, God, help them to understand in the youth, in the figure of youth, they God, that the sooner the life is given completely to you, the more likely it is to live a life free of regrets. Because so many regrets are rooted in youthful decisions. Please, God, trouble that young man who's hesitating. Trouble that young lady who's so fascinated by the world, she realizes to commit her life to you will have her separating from the world, and she's caught between heaven and hell. Our Father, by the power of the Spirit, just nudge her over the line on the side of heaven. She'll be glad you did. Please, Father, give us a hatred for the world and a love for the things of heaven. Your servant writes in the review in Herald, January 24, 1880. If your thoughts, your plans, your purposes are all directed toward the accumulation of the things of earth, your anxiety, your study, your interests will all be centered upon the world. The heavenly attractions will lose their beauty. The glories of the eternal world will cease to have the force of reality to you. And this is the condition many of us are in because our minds are on the earth, not in heaven. I ask you one more time, Holy Father, in humility, acknowledging I'm a sinner. Help us to understand the importance. It has importance that it stretches to eternity. The importance of living holy for Christ. This is why we were given life. And your servant writes in historical sketches, page 285, paragraph 4, every youth should be impressed with the fact that he's not his own. That his strength, his time, his talents belong to God. It should be his chief purpose in life to glorify God and to do good to his fellow man. Please, Father, reach these young people, particularly, because all things being equal, they have a long life ahead of them if Christ still delays. Let them find their greatest joy in reflecting you and let their lives lead others to Jesus. Please hear me, not just the young, bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Ease our burdens, they God. Wipe away our tears. And bless us, I pray, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let God's people say, Amen.